We have a series of storms kind of slamming the Pacific Northwest. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagus. We are going to break that down first, and then we're going to get back into a detailed tropical update. We still have Philippe out there that formed this weekend, but the Hurricane Center also highlighting two more areas. We're going to break down the latest on those and kind of look a little bit long range in the model as well. Maybe some shenanigans in the North Gulf Coast to pay attention to towards the early stages of October. Before we get into the video, if you want to stay updated on the weather and, of course, the rest of hurricane season you have to hit subscribe please do that if you happen to find this content helpful please give it a thumbs up it really does help us out a lot post in the comments where you're tuning in from let's get to it this thing is a beast look at it this is the water vapor imagery we can see the swirl here look at that thing hanging off the northwest corner of the united states all of this green here represents the moisture that is just working its way right into the pacific northwest call one of these these those those atmospheric rivers we'll get into that in just a second but basically that system is supplying all of this moisture kind of focused in on an area and then the mountains also not helping matters much into kind of squeezing out all of the moisture possible because when air rises, it cools and condenses and enhances that rain. We call that orographic orgra lift. So we have several different mechanisms forcing all of this precip north, of course, that main uh, storm system, the culprit, and then forcing that air right into the mountains and going up and over. Look at some of these rainfall totals, especially over... The coastal area. So this is going to be all the way through Thursday here. Near Forks, Washington. What's going on? We have maybe up to four inches of rain. And sometimes, again, the model underdoes this. I want to be clear about that, especially in these kind of more localized rainfall events where we do have another forcing mechanism. Models sometimes under underdo this. So this is the straight-up Euro forecast from the model. But we can be pushing five, six inches of rain on an isolated scale in northwest Washington. Spokane, of course, we're on the drier side of the mountain. So as the air comes up, it goes down. When air sinks, it dries out, it warms up. So Seattle, we certainly have a rainy bunch of days coming. Maybe not as wet, or at least in terms of the amount of rain, as what we'll see on the other side of the mountains. Newport, Oregon buck 60 for you again we could be pushing two or three inches of rain as well same for us into eureka a little bit less in medford but it is going to be a rainy and stormy week ahead in the pacific northwest all because of that big time system kind of spiraling out there just offshore i want to show you now the relative humidity this is going to be just a couple thousand feet above your head and it shows the moisture transport and when i mentioned at the earlier stages of this video that we have that swirl out here and then we have that storm kind of supplying that focused area, almost like a fire hose of moisture right into parts of the Pacific Northwest and Northern Canada. That is that atmospheric river. So I'm going to put that back into motion and you see more green representing the moisture kind of forcing its way back in here. So this is going to be a several day thing. And as is typical when you get these setups, especially when it's one big area of low pressure that kind of works as a conveyor belt. And until that moves, it kind of forces all of that moisture right back into the Pacific Northwest. So we're going to be watching that for some flooding issues, even some gusty winds again. Pacific Northwest, again, we're going to be having some of the worst weather really there and then the southeast corner of the United States. And I will get back into that uh, in a little bit, kind of at the end of the tropical update. If you're watching from Florida or the deep south, it's not going to be tropical related that our weather is going to be kind of iffy. But nonetheless, it's going to be unsettled to say the least. More on that in a second. First though, I want to get into the tropical update for my friends in the Caribbean, in the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. You're watching what is now Philippe closely for you for the potential for some impacts. I'm happy to say, I don't think we're going to get that. It's, it's starting to take route one. If you're watching the videos last week, we were talking about it had an exit opportunity here. That was exit two. And then it had an exit right there as well. It is starting to take number one, which means it's going to miss this. There's a little fork in the road. I'll show you the models in just one second on Philippe, where it could get further out here. But again, I do think we are sitting pretty in the Caribbean. We also have this big red X that's Invest 91L. And then this little thing north of the Yucatan in the central Gulf of Mexico. What is that? One of the reasons why it is going to be so unsettled, and I'm going to use this map before we get into some of the modeling for the southeast. We have a big chunk of high pressure right there. We have this little upper level trough right here. 
And this is going to funnel in a ton of tropical moisture right on into western Cuba, right through Florida, and then through parts of the deep south as well. We're going to have a front set up right about there, and that's going to help to kind of focus all of that rain maybe just straight up into Florida. The drier air behind that front will keep a lot of it out of the deep south. Nonetheless, while that's ongoing, we also have the chance for some tropical development. You see there's some storms there right there. It's a low shot, but as that kind of pushes out and moves towards the western gulf there's a chance for some slow tropical development so we are going to keep our eye on that but that's one of the reasons why the southeast specifically florida is going to have some of the worst weather across the country with our friends in the pacific northwest as well so kind of both ends of the u.s kind of ugly weather wise here's the latest on philippe notice how consistent it stays 50 mile per hour tropical storm almost all the way through but also notice how the cone balloons like that. Kind of weird. The models have a big fork in the road coming up. And you see what happens with that. Uh, the GFS and its ensembles, all the different initial conditions put into the model, they're out here. They want to take completely path one out. Well... UK Met, reliable model, Hurricane Wharf, reliable model, and then the TV Con, that's the consensus model the Hurricane Center uses, they're in, yeah, I'm going to keep on driving a little bit before I take the exit off. Both of these, though, mean these are not coming to the United States. We talked about that. Way 2 was the end-all, be-all that was going to block it from coming to the Southeast U.S. or the Mid-Atlantic. Just keeping a little close eye for our friends in Bermuda, but still, I'm optimistic that it does that and just completely leaves us alone. Just keep, keep that in the back of your mind. Behind that, we have Invest 91L. That stands for Area of Investigation. That's when the hurricane model starts to get run. It looks very similar to what was done with Philippe. A few of them kind of get weird out here. TVCon, Hurricane Wharf on the lower end, but most of these bend it out. We should not have to worry about that across any landmass. Again, we're always watching, of course, but there's nothing to be too terribly concerned with this thing. And that brings me to what I want to end with, kind of way down the pipeline here. Uh, this is kind of, this is the European model solution here. Uh, the low-level spin. This is Philippe. So the European is low and west. Even if it does try to come super far south towards the Turks and Caicos, it will be so, so weak by this time. And this little guy here, this little non-tropical feature, is going to absorb it. Watch what happens. This is 91L. That's likely to become a name storm already by that point. Also bending away from the island, so some good news. Notice how Philippe kind of absorbed both of those gone. Could be a little stormy, though, for Bermuda, depending upon how that exchange goes. We're going to watch that again. That's early, you know, October 1st. Last couple of days of September, so still some time to iron that out. Note this, though. This little elongated area of spin here. That's what we're looking at. The darker the red, the stronger the spin. But when it's broad like that, that's because it's right along a cold front. Watch what happens. Maybe a sneaky little tropical area developing here. That's October 4th and 5th, right towards the Big Bend area of Florida or to the Panhandle. This is the only model showing that. But it's a plausible scenario because... This is the time now as we get into October that we look for those homegrown storms. Fronts coming off, installing. It's very similar to what happened with Ophelia, except it formed on the Atlantic side of the front that stalled over and then worked its way to the Carolinas. So that's way, 10 days away. A lot to iron out. A lot to see what happens with all this tropical moisture. A lot of junk getting into that area but certainly that is in the realm of possibilities thank you guys so much for tuning in again if you found this content helpful please give it a thumbs up if you want to stay updated on all things weather you have to hit subscribe please do that and we will catch you next time